Um, what we're looking at now, and we have been over the last few weeks, is a sermon series entitled, as you can see behind me, Signs of the Kingdom, looking at the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. If you cast your mind way back, Chris opened the series with, well, the first two sermons Chris preached was Jesus the Father and John the Baptist, looking at the power of God. Do you remember that? Say yes. Yeah. <laughs> He'll feel much better if you did. Um, and, and the following week, Chris then looked at um, Jesus and the devil, and particularly how he used the power of God's word in the wilderness. And then the last time we were together, which was two weeks ago, Claire Paulson looked at the title of Jesus and the Lost, anointed by the power of the Spirit. If you remember that, that was just two weeks ago. You should do. Um, and today we're following on from Claire's passage, Claire's sermon, um, with the title Jesus and Demons Confronting the Power of Darkness. So, yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to read the passage from the uh, NIV, from the New International Version, and then we'll get into it. So it's Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 31 to verse 37. Then Jesus went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and he taught there in the synagogue every Sabbath day. There too the people were amazed at his teaching, for he spoke with authority. Once, when he was in the synagogue, a man, possessed by a demon, an evil spirit, cried out, shouting, Go away! I don't know what his accent was. Go. Do you think he was northern? No, that's wrong. Go away! Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet. Come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the demon threw the man to the floor as the crowd watched, and then it came out of him without hurting him further. Amazed, the people exclaimed, what authority and power this man's words possess. Even evil spirits obey him, and they flee at his command. The news about Jesus spread through every village in the entire region. What, I, what we're going to look at today is that man who the Bible says was possessed by a demon. The word possessed is not always helpful in today's language. I, I maybe prefer words like oppressed. Or even, I read somebody, I thought it was quite nice, talked about infected. It's like infected by a demon. So don't, they don't do you any good, is the thing. And, ju and just to say, we're going to focus... Dave, Dave Devonish, in his book, De Demolishing Strongholds, which is a good few years old now, but still a very good book about the demonic and demonic activity, he highlights three main areas of demonic um, behaviour... The first one is really around, he highlights one around temptation, demonic temptation. Now, there is also temptation which is just human and fleshly, worldly, if you like, but he, he highlights a demonic temptation. He also talks about demonic attack, where, you know, maybe you've experienced those moments of when there's almost like a presence in your home and it's like, a bit scary or, I don't know, pictures jump off the wall and things like that. Have you had that demonic attack? But this is talking about demons affecting people. And like I say, the Bible talks about possessed, but I think the better word is oppressed, affected and infected by demons. So that's what this fella here, this poor fella did in the, in the synagogue here. So I don't know what you think when you hear an account like this. You know, to many modern ears, it's just, it could sound just a bit bizarre and a bit weird. And, you know, some people might just write it off as like first century superstition. You know, we're much more sophisticated now after all, aren't we? Yeah. 
you know. And, and today we're, we're much more aware of different mental illnesses and different behavioural conditions. And the existence of demons today in the 21st century modern Western world is just a little bit of mumbo jumbo, isn't it? I would say no. It's, and I think it's important for me to say that I do believe demons exist today. Because they've spoken to me. I've seen firsthand the damage they do or can do to people's lives. I, at, at this point, I just want to illustrate from an experience I had in my formative years as a Christian, as a stupid Christian, I didn't know hardly anything, when I encountered something which I've never seen to the extent since. It was a neighbour of ours, when we was in our first house, we got to know her a little bit, and she... She used quite a lot of drugs at the time, but she became a friend of ours and we used to, you know, we used to get on. And then we lost touch of her for a couple of years and then I bumped into her and, you know, like you bump into someone and say, oh, how are you? And she replied quite simply, not good. And gave me, by way of answer to that question, a great big social services folder which she was carrying around with her and encouraged me to read it. And as I read through her life story, essentially, it was a shocking account of the most severe abuse from a very young child up through her life into her teenage years. That resulted in, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of kids in this room, so but some horrible things that happened to her. She got drawn into satanic worship of the worst kind. I mean, this girl was in a mess. It all stemmed from her victimhood as an abuse, as an abuse victim. But she was oppressed by demons, this poor girl. She used to come to our house loads. She used to phone us up in the middle of the night. I'd go and pick her up and bring her home. She had fears. She had stuff going on. You'd talk to her and she'd answer you in three different voices, contradicting each other. I've spoke to demons. I've seen how demons oppress people. It's not mumbo-jumbo. It's not superstition. It's a spiritual reality. In our relatively safe cozy western world we sometimes need to be reminded we are in a cosmic struggle with dark vile forces of of hell and most of the time we don't realize that most of the time we don't live like that and we also need to be very very aware of the of the holy spirit who is with us right we need the Holy Spirit so we can deal with those unholy spirits which are still there today, not just in first century Palestine. Last time, um, when Claire was talking, she, she, and she, she referred to Jesus preaching in the synagogue in Nazareth and people were amazed at his gracious words, it said. And th but then soon after, do you remember, the crowd turned on Jesus and he... He, he, he supernaturally escaped, just about escaped with his life. Do you remember that? Well, so then Jesus is he's moved to Capernaum in this passage, and as usual, he's, he's gone to the synagogue, and he's preaching again. And you think, even after all that, that the life-threatening stuff before, he carried on on his mission. There's a little lesson and a sermon there in itself, I think. And again, the people in the synagogue in Capernaum were amazed and astonished at his teaching because he spoke as one with authority. And when Jesus spoke, people marveled at his words. They marveled at his power. Let's marvel at the power of God, shall we? Let's remind ourselves as we read scriptures, wow, look what he can do. Look what he did as he walked this earth. What, look what he can do today. So Jesus has amazed the people. And the demons don't like it, right? Jesus has gone to church, if you like. like he's, he's in the synagogue. And right there is a man infected by a demon who starts shouting at him. 
You don't expect demon-possessed people in churches, do you? Somebody said, yeah. Right? There's a clear example here of the gathering of God's people and there's a demonic presence showing itself. And I think one, it's one of the reasons we don't always expect to see demons in church, apart from one or two people, um, is the cultural images which we've sort of been shaped by, enough of them through movies, to be honest with you. you know, if we expect to see demons at all, we'd pr- it'd probably be uh, in a mist-shrouded graveyard, you know, or, or an ancient dark forest with, with strange, scary sounds somewhere just off camera, you know? That's what our image of demons is. But here, we've, we're taken to the gathering of God's people, and there's a demon! Does it happen today? Yes, it does. You know, Dave, Dave Devonish, the, the author of this book, in, in this book, he offers some pragmatic and helpful insights on this very practically. So let's, just read, let's just read that little quote from Dave Devonish. He said, The writers of the New Testament seem to suggest that people were set free as they responded to the gospel or during the early challenges of living the Christian life. However, in practice, many people may have been Christians for a long time without issues of demonic influence from their past life being challenged. In this event, demonic strongholds may come to light at, later stage, at a later stage and we have to deal with them at the time. So in an ideal world... You get born again, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you're, it's all cleaned up, but in, practically, in practice, it doesn't happen that way. I think sometimes by the grace of God, it doesn't happen that way. That he allows us to get to a level of strength, to a certain level of strength, and then he will minister to us. And some people will get to another level of strength, and he'll minister to us a little bit deeper and a little bit further. Here, in this passage, it was the very presence of Jesus that was enough to cause the demon to reveal itself. Jesus is there, and he's preaching. Ah, what do you want with us? Go away. Why are you interfering with us, Jesus? Have you come to destroy us? The demons, when they met Jesus, were all scared, and they knew who he was, and they kept asking those sorts of questions. It was, there was a mocking cry, a sneering, but a fear. A fear of the Holy One. And do you know what? I, I've, I've not heard many sermons preached about the demonic or evil spirits during my many years as a Christian. Right? And yet from Genesis to Revelation, Satan and evil spirits are openly talked about and referred to and commented on. Jesus himself, as we know, has dialogue with both Satan himself and various demons. Demons are mentioned loads of times in Scripture. The New Testament talks about them all the time. Refers to, referring to them as sometimes the word demons, or evil spirits or impure spirits. So what do we need to know about demons and the demonic? Well, I think, first of all, understand they are real. I mean, I've I've just referred to that lady I knew, and I just saw the horrible effect they had on her. They hate us. They cause torment. They can inflict or be the source of Physical illness or mental illness, not all, the, not all mental illness or physical illness is demonic, by the way. We don't want them as pets. That's not good, right? And we certainly don't want to be their friend because they are vile and dark and from the pit. And we need to understand that is the reality of that. I can't stress that enough. This isn't like a scary movie. This is a reality. But we should not fear. We must not fear. Why would we fear? We, are, we belong to the king of kings, don't we? We belong to the one who walks into a synagogue and they're so scared, 
that they have a go at him. And he just takes authority. And it always seems to be the pattern when Jesus encounters demons in the New Testament. There's a, there's, the demons often, there's a protest of some sort. The demons complain, what are you doing? What do you want with us? Leave us alone. Don't torment us. There's a fear in those who cause a lot of fear. They knew their days were numbered. In fact, those demons have a clear understanding because they knew who Jesus was as well. So often people don't. Even people in churches have responded to Christ to, to one level. They think they don't really get who Jesus is. The demons did. They knew who he was. They knew what the truth was. They knew about his authority and his power. And I think as the church, we need to grasp something of that. We teach it and we hear it, but we need to live it, don't we? The authority of Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me, Jesus said, therefore go. And we're going to look in a minute at what that means. Do you have a clear understanding of Jesus' power? How do you feel when you hear about demons or when you encounter demons? I don't want nothing to do with them. It's too scary. It's too... Or oh, no. Hold on. I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. There's the authority. There's the power. You know, demons flee before him. Demons flee. As Christians, we need to understand the power of Christ. We need to see that power at work in people's lives. Lives that are changed by the gospel so completely and so totally. People becoming believers well, you know, we, 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 most of us are used to seeing his power at work when we lay hands on the sick and pray for them. We don't always see every sick person healed, but there's a growing faith, isn't there? I'm going to pray for them. Why do we do that? Because we want to see them healed, and often, sometimes at least, we do. But we seem reluctant to pray for freedom when it comes to demonic infection, demonic oppression, don't we? Have I misread it? We don't really see much of that. I think we need to understand that these things are happening and these things are going on, but we should not fear. You know, in, in, in the Old Testament, in the book of Joshua, God spoke to Joshua and he commanded him to have courage. Be strong. Be courageous. And he warned him of the battle that was coming as they were, they were going to go into the promised land and finally take that promised land. He also said he would be with them in the battle. <clears throat> but we must remind ourselves again and again, we too are in a battle. It's not like a battle. It is a battle. And he promises to be with us also. I will never leave you or forsake you, he says. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that because sometimes it is scary. And I remember that girl that I talked about. I was really scared sometimes, but I thought, no, God is with me. I mean, I used to, sometimes I'd open the Bible, my little pocket Bible in front of it, long before phones had Bibles on. And I'd start reading a psalm or something to her, and this thing would smash it out of my hand. I think... Well, you might have knocked it out of my hand, but you can't do away with the word of God. That's eternal and true. And I'd just pick it up and read it again. All right? And then I'd ask her a question and she'd speak to me and she'd, she would answer me, the girl, troubled, poor girl. And she'd say, I asked her a question, she'd say yes, and the demon would go, no. It was like that, yes, no. All right? But by the grace of God with me and the authority he delegates to me, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I knew he was with me. And I knew I was in a battle, but I knew he is victorious. And that's the point. It's not this, will I win? Won't I win? Is the devil going to win? Is God going to win? This seems to be, who knows? No, he's won the victory. That's why them demons are so scared. That's why they're so frightened when Jesus walks into the room.
We're in a battle. And he promises to be with us. So are you ready to fight? Are you? I think, oh, mate, I don't really want to fight. I'm too old. I'm too young. I don't know enough. I'm, I've been around too long. I don't want to do it. Listen, we know the well-known words in Ephesians chapter 6, don't we? Where Paul says something similar. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. You know it. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Not run away from them. Not hide and let someone else do it. For our struggle, and this is important as well, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against ru the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That poor girl I referred to was not the enemy. She did some horrible things and she behaved in bad ways, but it wasn't her fault to an extent. Right? There's evil forces at work. That passage continues. So therefore put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything, to stand. To stand your ground. So it's not flesh and blood we're fighting. But it is very real. Now Jesus cast out demons from loads of people demonic affliction and if you read through the gospels it, 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 demonic affliction included pe making people blind and mute and deaf they had convulsions some had superhuman strength they had, they had self-destructive behavior cutting themselves but we must also be very aware that demonic activity is separate from those afflictions. In the Bible, demons show themselves all over the place. We see them in the marketplace. We, we see them in homes and like in our story here in the synagogue. And we live in a broken world, don't we? Where Satan has some dominion. But we also know and have to remind ourselves, Jesus came to destroy the work of the evil one. 1 John 3, 8 says, The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So, so we know demons are real, but what else should we know? Well, the most important thing we need to know is this. We have the authority to cast them out. You have the authority to cast them out. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a Christian for 40 years. You have the authority. If you have Christ in you and you are in Christ, you have the authority. You may not have much experience. You may do things slightly wrong. But remember, you have the authority. Right? And, and, and I say that with confidence. As we read through the Gospels, we see how Jesus... Um, instructs his followers at the time and his disciples. Jesus, in, in Matthew 10, verse 1, he says to the disciples, go drive out impure spirits, oh, and to heal every disease and sickness. And he says it again in verse 8, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Mark chapter 3, verses 13, uh, to 15, he appointed the 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to what? To drive out demons. Right, it's very clear, isn't it? Luke 10, after Jesus sent out the 72 followers with authority to proclaim the kingdom and heal the sick, we read in verse 17 of Luke 10, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. It's like they're a little bit surprised. Jesus responds by reminding them that they have the authority and that Satan is defeated. I've stated this over and over again, but we need to hear this as a church, don't we? To the early church, casting out demons and healing the sick was just what you did. Right, in Acts 8, you know the story. It was it Philip went down to a city in Samaria and it says, with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many. Right? Whoa, there's the man of God come to town. Look out, demons. 
In Acts 19, we're, we're about, talking about the Apostle Paul, it said, even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him, that Paul, were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. There's power and faith. Now, of course, we need the gift of discernment. And that's, you know, in the list of spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, one of those is discerning spirits, isn't it? We need to, to be um, sh- clever. We need to be shrewd. We need to draw on that spiritual gift to work out if someone's oppression is demonic. Right? Demons can be behind some illnesses, but not every illness. Right? They can cause mental health problems, but not all mental health problems are demonic. And we, uh, we certainly don't need to go hunting for demons. Right? Don't go looking for demons around every corner. Is there one around there? Have a look under your chair. Is there one? No. Right? We don't go digging around for them, but rather let's actively pursue Jesus. Right? That's what, who we should pursue. Don't go pursuing demons. Pursue Christ. Right? And as we do that, as we wholeheartedly seek him and his presence, but through prayer and through scripture, studying, through just bathing in his, basking in his presence by worshipping him, you'll be ready if some unclean spirit does show himself. And then we can deal with them in the power and authority that we have been delegated. Not forgetting to put on the full armour of God. 1 John chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, we read these words. Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Do you like that? That's us. The one who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. The demon in the synagogue and all the other accounts knew who Jesus was. They knew what the truth was. They knew about his authority and power. Oh, they knew. Do you know? Do you know who he is? Are you confident in his authority? Are you confident in the power he delegates to you? We have to ask ourselves these questions. You know, I'll finish with another little account of a fella, another, another sad case. I may have mentioned this guy before when I preached, but a friend of ours picked up a hitchhiker. I don't recommend this, right? A, a, girl, a, girl of ours, a, girl, a friend of ours, a female, was driving home, and there was a fella by the side of the road hitchhiking, so she thought, I'll do the kind thing, and offered him a lift. Pretty much as soon as he got in the car, she thought, oh, no, I've made a mistake. He starts talking in these really weird things and about really, really odd stuff. So she thought, I know what to do. I'll go around Paul and Denise's house. (laughs) So honestly, so we're settled in for a nice Saturday night in front of the telly. And uh, yeah, and there's a knock on the door. And my my friend, my friend, as as I opened the door, she gave me the look. And there's this fella stood behind her. She went... Paul, I want you to meet my friend. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we and weird. This is weird, right? This is I don't know if this is discernment or not. As as I was talking on the doorstep, Denise went in our kitchen, and she that we had in in those days you had these magnetic racks you can put your sharp knives on, right, on the wall. You don't. It's, it's much more sophisticated now, isn't it? So we had all these sharp knives on them. Denise gathered all these knives and put them up on top of the fridge. <laughs> Now, that, and I think this was discerning. Anyway, so she, he never saw that. He just came in, and I, and I took him in the kitchen and sat him down and left. We had, some, we had two people. There was a couple around with us as well for a nice social evening. <laughs> sat, in the, sat in our kitchen at our kitchen table, 
And this guy, first of all, he said, why did you hide the knives? <laughs> I know, I know. And then he started, he started praying for himself in this really flowery sort of over-the-top King James English. Heavenly Father, please bless your servant, blah, blah, blah. And, he, and I thought, well, he's praying for himself. I'll pray for him as well. So I, I started praying for him, and I just put my hand on his shoulder and started praying in, in the spirit, praying in a language I hadn't learned. I was just praying. And then he turned around and he looked at me and went, you win. And then promptly ran to my kitchen sink and vomited, vomited all in my sink. I had to clear it up. Actually, I'll probably let Denise clear it up. <laughs> right? I know. This, it was like real, full on. It was like a movie, this stuff. Um, I thought, thanks to my friend for bringing him round. But, but my, my whole point, I mean, there's, there's some humour in that. It wasn't much humour at the time. Um, is even in the midst of that, with my lack of experience, I did know the authority of Christ. And we should not be fearful that he is with us always to the very end of the age. He has commissioned us. He has delegated authority to us. Like he sent the 12 and the 72, he sends us. And we have that authority. And I, and I believe we will begin to see more manifestations of demonic things as we understand this stuff. I believe those experiences I had, some of them a long way back, were, were to prepare me, to prepare us for what is to come. God is on the move in this nation. God is going to change lives and he's going to set the prisoners free. Right? You, you know, we, we, we know all those words from Isaiah 61. Right? The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us because he's anointed us to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives. People are held captive by vile demonic activity. Released from darkness for the prisoners. There's people in prisons, metaphorical prisons, who don't know which way. They can't even see the way out. And we come and shine light and offer hope and life. Amen? Amen. Can the band come up and join me, please? Um, you know, no one hated Jesus more than those demonic beings... But when Jesus showed up, they quaked with fear. And so that should be. And as, as we bring Jesus into our situations, into our workplaces, into our families, it, wherever we are, we, we need to be aware. We need to just to be a bit sharper. We bring Christ. The demons will quake with fear. And sometimes that means they show themselves. But they should quake, shouldn't they? Because he is victorious. He is victorious. He is the king of all kings and the lord of all lords. And that is so important. Just, uh, just underline as I'm finishing. It's not a will he, won't he battle. Oh, there's, there's God and there's the devil. Well, who's going to win this? Right, you, don't, you don't go down Paddy Power and put a bet on who might win. We know who wins. right? Because we know the end of the story. He is victorious. Do not fear. I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to sing. And then I'm going to pray for us generally. But I, I just wonder if, if there are people here who would like some prayer. Maybe you feel fearful. You think, I shouldn't feel fearful. Maybe... There's something stirring in you that just makes you feel really uncomfortable. And I know there's people in this room in the past who have run out of this hall because of the demonic in their life. But by God's grace, they came back to be set free. Could be anything that God is saying or doing. But I'd just like to pray for us all. Should we stand together? And then I'll get out of your way, Sharon. <laughs> she want me to stay? I'll stay. Um, <laughs> Because we want to focus on Jesus and not the demons. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are with us. Not just in this room. We don't have to invite you. 
or sing songs that say, come, you are here. And wherever we go, you go with us. Because your promise is to never leave. And I pray for each and every one of us. We'll have a fresh and clearer understanding of who we are in Christ. The delegated authority that is ours. That we can minister from grace and love to, to tormented souls that we come up against. Knowing that Jesus ultimately is always the answer. Use us, Lord. And I pray for those right now who just have that struggle, that internal struggle. I say, Holy Spirit, minister to them. Come in power and show yourself. There's individuals here who need you in a special way, Lord. Come and show yourself. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. And I, and I know, and I just say this, perfect love casts out all fear. Even if there's a little element of fear in your heart now, think, oh, I don't like all this talk. Perfect love casts out all fear. And I, once again, it's go back to Christ. Go back to him. Go back to him in prayer. Go back to him in the word. Go back to him in worship and meditation. Go to Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's turn our eyes upon Jesus, shall we? Yeah.